Hello everyone, my name is Michael Sacano and I'm a graduate student in the School of Materials Engineering at Purdue University. In this lecture we'll be covering linear regression, which is just one of many lectures in this in the series on data science for material science and engineering. In this module we'll be looking at specifically linear regression using materials examples and we'll provide hands-on tutorials as well as homeworks to reinforce your understanding of linear regression. So without further ado, let's get started. Here are the learning objectives for this lecture. Specifically, we'll be looking at developing your own linear regression model and fit it to materials data. Two specific examples we'll be focusing on are extracting materials properties and finding correlation between these materials properties. Lastly, we'll look at evaluating the uncertainties and computing errors in the fitted model. As a prerequisite, uh, we expect that you have a basic understanding of Python programming, and a resource is shown below. So first, we want to approach data science and machine learning and science and engineering because we want to be able to learn from data. This can be done by acquiring data from online repositories, and specifically in this series, we're interested in developing predictive models using supervised learning. What we'll show here is we'll be developing linear models to predict materials properties and to find correlation between materials properties. We're also interested in using data science to find patterns using unsupervised learning. In this case, our data exists in a higher dimensional space, which is hard for us to understand, but we can use techniques to scale down our data and to get it into a more manageable space. Lastly, data science can help in aiding in the design of experiments, and this can all be done through cyber infrastructures. Specifically, you will be using NanoHub, which is an online cloud computing resource where you're able to run tools with a click of a button right out of your web browser. So, let's get started on linear regression and predictive models. So first we ask, what is linear regression? And in general, regression is a measure of the relationship between inputs and outputs, or insults and response. And it's useful because we can use it to extract materials properties. In general, for weak insults, materials tend to respond proportionally, in this case in a linear fashion. And shown in the bullets below are three examples of linear relationships between two materials properties. Second, materials properties can actually be linearly correlated if they come from common origins, and we'll show an example of that later on. So, how do we actually quantify this linear relationship? First, we're going to start with our data, x and y data pairs, and we're going to define our linear model. We would like to obtain an optimal m and b, or slope and y-intercept from our linear model, and this can be done by minimizing the objective function. Shown here are two possible objective functions that are very common in the literature mean squared error, and mean absolute error. Mean squared error is the average squared difference between the model prediction and the ground truth. This can also be thought of as the variance. On the other hand, mean absolute error is just the average uh, absolute difference between the prediction and the ground truth. So what do we do with the mean squared error? Well, in order to optimize our slope and y-intercept, we need to take the derivative with respect to the two parameters for our MSC and set those derivatives to be equal to zero. Therefore, at the end, we will have two equations with two unknowns and we'll be able to solve for our optimal m and b. We'd also like to know about uncertainties in our parameters m and b, and we do this by looking at the variance of the two parameters. For more rigorous proof on these equations, we'd like to address you to the resources shown at the bottom of the slide. So now, let's look at a real example of defining a linear model using real data points. And this is obtained from the link in the right side of the screen, and the data can be visualized above. First, we define our linear model, and then we define the equations based on the points in our model. We can compute the mean squared error, and then we minimize the MSE by taking the partial derivative with respect to the two parameters of interest, M and B. And upon doing so, we see that we have an exact solution because we have two equations with two unknowns. And so we can find our optimal B and M. 
So now let's apply this to an actual materials example. So we want to discuss this application of linear regression in the context of materials science. And we'll be going over two, exam two examples that will be a part of the hands-on tutorial for you to be able to do yourself. The first example focuses on being able to extract materials properties, specifically mechanical properties from uniaxial tensile test. Shown on the right side of the screen is a schematic representation of a typical tensile test where a specimen is pulled apart in tension using a load frame. Two material properties which we're going to obtain from this tensile test. The first one is the deformation in the material or how long the material or how much deformation, how much the material deforms upon being pulled in tension. And this can be measured using X densometer. The second is the measure of force via the load cell. So if we know the force by being measured through the load cell and we know the cross-sectional area of our sample, we can measure the stress in units of pressure. Again, if we know information about the deformation in our material, which is related to the change in length, and we know the original length of our sample, then we can measure the strain, which is unilus. We know, shown on the left, which is an example of a stress strain profile for a material, that for very small deformations, we see that stress strain has a linear relationship, and that the slope of this stress strain is known as the Young's modulus, and this is just one of a few elastic constants to describe small deformations in these materials. The Young's moduli is important. This is an important concept because we can actually use linear regression to measure the Young's moduli if we have information about the stress and strain of the material. Once we actually determine the slope or the Young's moduli from our stress strain profile, we can use it to define another important materials property this being the yield stress. The yield stress is important because it actually marks the beginning or the onset of plastic deformation. This value is critical in material selection because in many cases we want to actually avoid permanent deformation in our material. And so when we actually quantify yield stress we can define it by using the 0.2% offset rule. A second example which we'll be exploring is in this hands-on section is to, be in is to use data science tools to explore correlations between materials properties from common origins. Many properties of a material actually depend on the interaction between atoms and this can be shown here on the left schematically. Usually high bond strength tends to lead to higher melting temperature and this in turn is actually correlated with higher stiffness. So, can we, actually, can we actually explore these correlations between the bond strength slash stiffness and the melting temperature of various, material prop, various materials using data science tools? Both of these previously mentioned examples will be followed via the hands-on tutorial that you will be able to do personally with the provided data. Shown here on the left is an image of a stress strain profile taken from a paper. This will be preloaded into the first um, part for linear regression, and you'll be able to use that data to create your own linear model and make predictions on the Young's modulus. In the second part, we'll be looking at exploring the correlations between Young's modulus and melting temperature, which again, you'll be able to read in the data and create your own model. So in summary, we've seen that we can use linear regression techniques to find inherent relationships in the fundamental materials laws of our material. Showcased here were examples of using linear regression to define the Young's modulus, which is the linear coefficient between the strain and stress of a material, as well as to look and define a linear model between the melting temperature and the Young's moduli of various elements. This can be thought as determining trends and correlations to be extracted from our learned models, which is very important because it can actually help aid in the design of novel materials. The code for both of these examples can be found at the links below, and 
What's even more interesting is that you'll be able to modify them to meet your own needs and your own research examples. So the next step, now that we've finished the lecture, is to start uh, going to the slides, just going to the links here, and looking at the hands-on tutorial, which will take you step by step to develop your own linear models. Lastly, we hope that you go and look at the homework's assignments because it's important to help reinforce the concepts of linear regression and to make sure that you will be able to use these techniques in your own research at the end of the day. So with that, I'd like to thank you for your time. We hope to see you around at the other lecture series.